Hi guys, Ian Johnson from driversuccess.com. Today we're going to talk about a very simple and straightforward lean manufacturing tool or a very uh, simple Six Sigma tool. We're talking about spaghetti diagrams. And what this is, this is basically part of the business process mapping uh, doctrine. And this is the perfect tool for any manufacturer that wants to basically declutter their shop floor. And what I've done in this case is I basically mapped out a fictitious uh, shop floor for a manufacturer where I've got shipping and receiving quality control, soldering, inventory, CNC, CNC programming, drilling, tapping, reaming, cleaning, assembly, uh, and a material placement for billets and blocks of aluminum or, or whatever else is being machined. Okay? And what we're doing in this case is every single operation uh, involved in manufacturing has a cycle time. And manufacturers know that if you reduce the cycle time in every operation, you're basically going to increase your production throughput, okay? Because you're becoming more efficient. However, the transit times between each one of these workstations plays a role in the overall cycle time for the finished part. So there's a cycle time for each operation, and then there's a cycle time from the product or, or the raw material that comes in through shipping and receiving, all the way through this process until it gets out the door. So cycle time for individual operations, and then a total cycle time for the entire finished good. And part of that cycle time relates to the transit times between each one of these operations. So this is why you're doing a spaghetti diagram. What you're trying to determine is what are the roadblocks and what are the issues in manufacturing that basically cause delays, cause downtime, lost time, idle time, these type of things. So I've mapped out the shop floor and this is what you're going to be doing. Now your first step when you start this process is you're going to map out the, prop, the, the shop floor, you draw it on a board or you draw it on, on a piece of paper. And then you're going to sit down with your production employees and you're basically going to explain to them that you are analyzing the process of work, the flow of work from one cell to the next. You're not measuring them as individuals and that's important that they understand that. Okay? The next thing you're going to do is you're basically going to define each one of the steps. Okay? And I'm going to use orange to do that. So the first step is number one, shipping and receiving. Okay? Number two, uh, quality control, material comes in, gets inspected. And then uh, number three is inventory. The material comes in, gets inspected, goes over to inventory in order to be accounted for. And then uh, number four is the CNC machining area. So it goes one, two, three, four. And uh, then it goes over to number five, which is drilling, number six, which is tapping, number seven, number eight. And, you know, whether this is exactly how it goes, it's, it's not the point. The point is I want you to basically use sequential numbers in order to designate the process of, of, of work and how it flows. Okay? Number eight and then number nine is assembly and tuning and then maybe uh, number ten right here is the soldering stations. Okay? Now I want you to use a continuous line. One to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, five to six, six to seven, seven to eight, 8 to 9, 9 to 10, and then 10 to the last step, which is number 11, which is shipping. Okay? Now, the reason why this is called a spaghetti diagram is because your job when you do these lines and you draw the flow of work is to draw exactly how work flows through the shop floor. And this means that if, it, if you come across, um, you know, uh, a, a pillar, okay, or a beam, I don't want you to draw the line through the pillar or through the beam, I want you to draw it around it, okay? Now, you've mapped out your shop floor, you've put sequential numbers in terms of how the work flows from one process to the next, and what I want you to do now is I basically want you to measure the distance, and I want you to take a measuring wheel and go onto your shop floor and measure the distance between step one to two, two to three, three to four, and every single step, okay? You're, you're basically going to take a measuring wheel and you're going to measure it out and you're going to do it for every single one and then you're going to watch how the work flows through the process. You're going to pay attention to any situation where an employee has to have a sign off on, on work or any time where they have to stop and wait and you're going to record that time because you're going to capture the amount of time it takes to move work from one process to the next. Now, essentially what happens when they do spaghetti diagrams is you're going to have a bunch of colors, okay? You've got one, two, and you're going to go back and forth, three, four, five, six, and you're going to go back and forth, 
and you're going to have a whole bunch of different colors. It's, it's common for people to have all kinds of colors going back and forth because they're taking several sample portions, okay, and they're going to take all kinds of different steps, and they're going to take all kinds of, of sample portions in order to understand how work is flowing and where it's going um, in order for it to get out the door. And what you're going to be doing in this case is you're going to end up with a situation where you're going to have step one to two, 50 feet. Okay? Step two to three, 100 feet. Now, this is just an example. What you're going to do is you're going to take every single step one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, five to six, six to seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, all of them, and you're going to track the feet. And then you're going to have basic times right here. Okay, this is going to be 20 seconds. And this is going to be 10 seconds. And then you're going to total up all of them, step three to four, and so on. And you're going to have all of the feet, 150 feet, I'm just using examples here, okay, 25 seconds. And you're going to end up with a number. And let's say at the end of all of this, through all steps, step 1 to 11, every single part travels, let's say, 1,200 feet and takes up three minutes of transit time. Now, if you rearrange your shop floor and reduce this number and this number, you will increase your production throughput. So this is how you do a spaghetti diagram. Map out your entire shop floor, speak to your production employees, ask them for input, ask them for their advice, use sequential numbers to dictate how work flows, use a measuring wheel for the distance, time it in seconds, capture downtime, capture delays, capture obstructions, and then total it up, and then you can say, we travel 1,200 feet for one batch of 100 units, we do 1,000 units, we're traveling 12,000 feet a day, and we're wasting 30 minutes of travel time. So that's it. Lean Manufacturing Spaghetti Diagrams. Ian Johnson, DriveSuccess.com. Bye-bye.